what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this, my second channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show goodness. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal and crypto link in the info box below this video. Now, we're in the interim stages between the two shows, so I'm going to hand across to the panel and you can enjoy the dulcet tones of whoever is in there while I set up for the second live show which will go out shortly on Nathan Oakley 1980. Or not. This top image was taken from a foot, and the distance to the boat was 6.5 miles away. Now then, all of the boat is seen in both images, except the hull and the words on this particular one are compressed. Can you see the compression that's going on? Yeah. So when you put your inferior mirage on top of that, you have an inferior mirage there, then you see just the top of the boat and you say, where's the bottom of the boat gone? It's in the inferior mirage with the compression. Does that yeah, make but, sense? Yeah, but I don't think like in my, if I share my screen again, um, well, in the on. very, the very last image, the bottom right, uh, yeah. th the whole boat is not like, all you can see is just a little pole on the top. Yep. Yeah, it's going further away and further away. It's like, if I go to the next image here, and what I've done is I've taken a crop of this image here, and I've placed it next to the other boat in the, in the exact same area, so that we're lining it up. So the top of the boat, all the way down to the, the orange part of the boat here, which is a lifeboat, it's all the same. It's retaining its, its height. So its angular size is relatively the same. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changing is the hull, the lower stuff. I can prove that this is obviously the same side by side. Uh, this is where we've taken a, the top part of the boat on each and placed them at side by side this time. But now look at the difference on the hull. Look how much of the hull has been shrunk. Yeah, but look where the red line is to the boat, to the boat, to the top of the boat, to the top of the boat. That's all relatively the same. And everything beneath this red line is now compressed on this boat. Does that, does that, you know, is that realistic enough for you? Yeah, I can see that. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I know in my well, image, it's, like... It's called compression. But what happens is, in this compression area here, quite often you get an inferior mirage. And funnily enough, where this compression starts is essentially where the curve calcs would say that this is where you should start to see the curvature. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live. There's also a PayPal and crypto link in the info box below this video. Most importantly, though, if you would like to support, if you'd like to join the panel, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. 
Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Wiggles, The Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior, Ranty Flat Earth, Physics Warrior, Chocolate Saiyan and Arwin. Good to have you all. G'day, g'day. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Good you. Uh, Ranty, I'm going to send you two pictures that uh, represent what we're talking about right now for you to you to um, display. Okay. And, and then we can just kind of look at them and talk through it with Wiggles again, because I think it shows it in the same, uh, same topic of what we're talking about. Hey, hang on, let me... Uh, where are you going to share the images? Uh, in just a second, I'm just going to put it in Skype. Hold okay. On. Uh, I do want to ask Wiggles, though, like, do you understand what Rancy was just showing you as far as the, uh, the center line and the compression, right? Now, yeah, he's showing, like, the... The, the, yeah, the view of the boat gets compressed into like a little small area. Right, because if that was curvature, you just shouldn't be able to see that word, right? You wouldn't be able to read it the way you still can, even though it's compressed, right? If it was curvature, it would just be gone. You just wouldn't see the word at all, right? Yeah, and I have a picture of a boat, though, where the boat is just gone. Like, um... Hello, Alan. I'm sharing on, on my screen now. Like on this picture of the boat, the boat is just gone. Hello, yeah, I, I explained Hello. it at the end of last show. Hi, Alan. So the top of this mast has a wider angle than the bottom of the boat, and the further it goes, it's you can even see it. This section of the boat has a reflection below it. That is the diffraction limit, the most limited angle you can see at that distance, beyond which it will vanish. But the top section, you have a wider angle to. Yeah, Nathan, I oh. totally get it. Limited Do angle of view perspective, something we yeah. totally ignore. I yeah, yeah, we should really account for this. Anybody? No, just dumbfounded silence from the t p total perspective deniers on the panel, right? Yeah. yeah, so a limited angle of view, Wiggles. Well, the angle of view of the boat in my picture there is larger than the angle of the mast. Yeah, the top of it is a wider angle. The bottom of it is a smaller angle. And the boat I'm looking at, no, the, the bottom of the boat is like the, the body of the boat is a wider angle. No, the lower down you get, the more limited your angle to something. Oh, the, the bottom of the boat is larger, like takes up more angle than the top of the little yes, pole on the Yes, and at a distance, the further away it gets and the lower it is, the more limited your angle of view to it. Uh, I don't think that happens. Oh, really? Yeah, well, then, that. that's tough luck because that's a fact. Hang on. No, we've it's not. Seen, no, it's you've not. seen it with Ranty. <clears throat> you've just seen it with Ranty. Oh. No, we haven't. Ranty, get well, your boat up. Yeah, Randy is showing a, a like there's some distortion going on there, but when no, 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 it's, like, it's becoming compressed as the angle happen. becomes more limited. It's not some sort of distortion. As the angle becomes more limited, it becomes smaller. The same as pushing something further away. The further it gets, the more limited the angle. Well, the same applies as you look down something. The lower you look towards the bottom of something, the more limited your angle to it. Why doesn't it make the horizontal smaller then? If that's true. What do you mean, the horizontal? We're changing the vertical by getting lower. Sorry, why doesn't it make the horizontal view? You've got an infinite view, 360 degrees potentially if you're on top of the hill. So why would you have a limited angle of view horizontally, Alan? You've referred to it as compression. You're aware that what, what compression is, you yes? Did, you didn't answer my question. I'm asking you to qualify your question, and you're now moving on. So, Alan, you've got potentially an infinite angle, 360 degrees all around you. You can turn your camera indefinitely. There's nothing limiting your view horizontally, but you've got the deck that you're looking over limiting your view vertically. And as you go down, you will get a more limited angle. That is a fact. No. What do you mean, no? Yes, that's a fact. The lower you look, the more limited the angle will be. 
Ranty, can you get your Steno one back on where it squashes the letters? Yeah, I've got it up now. Oh, I'm not. I'm not watching that screen at the minute. Why are the books the same length? I yeah, put my I'll just say it again, me. Alan. Third time. Maybe if you acknowledge what I say rather than ignoring it or just giving me a hand wave dismissal and saying no. On the horizontal, you have an infinite angle. There is nothing limiting the angle horizontally. Do well, you, you don't understand? Have an angle. You have a three sixty. I wasn't talking angle. to you, Wiggles. Well, Alan, I just had to correct. Yeah, I, I'm still not there. talking to you, Wiggles. I'm looking for an acknowledgement from your teammate who has had this explained three times. So, Alan, do you understand that the angle is in no way limited on the horizontal? Yes or no? No. Well, then you're an idiot because it's not limited in any way on the horizontal. Come on, Alan, you can see this surely. Do you well, need explaining for a fourth earthers. time or are we dealing with Dumbos who are just obfuscating? You're either you want... obfuscating the point, Alan, or no. a complete idiot. Which is it? I just, I just understand field of view. I don't think you do. Yeah, and you have an infinite field of view left to right and a limited field of view up and down because you're looking over a deck. So you can't continually look on a wider and wider angle. The floor gets in the way, Alan. What's the field of view of the human eye? Sorry, you're now moving on to something else, Alan. Bye. You have an <coughs> infinite angle on the horizontal. This is the fifth time I've explained it to you. There won't be a sixth. I'll just kick your obfuscating ass out. Do you not like people who disagree? Oh, so now we're on to asking me questions. No, it's not that I disagree. I've explained your objection about the horizontal field of view six times. And now I'm sick of you. So I'm kicking you out because you're a wanker. So sod off. Go somewhere else. You're not going to obfuscate the entire show when I've explained it six times to you. And you just keep moving on, not conceding like a typical globe head. Yes, I have the advantage. I've pointed it out to you. You won't acknowledge it because it demolishes your objection, Alan. So you can sod off. Goodbye. So, Wiggles. I, re I really think that the pictures that I've put in the Master B are going to give us a good idea of what we're talking about. I've given you three images of the same oil rig from the same vantage point at the shoreline. Okay, I'll have a quick low nosy now. I think I also think that the point's been lost here, that things get smaller as a function of distance, and the maths doesn't account for it, and we want to know why. That point's been lost. Yeah, so I was trying to, trying to get Wiggles back onto it. So, Wiggles... The angle to the bottom of things is more limited than the angle to the top of it. Obviously. Do you not understand not this? Or I'm do I need sure to explain exactly it five times? Saying. Yeah, we know that's the problem. You're, you don't understand perspective because you're a baller or you're deliberately stupid. It's one or the other. Wiggle. Well, if yeah. I don't understand it, Wiggle. then I'm um, open to having it explained to me. Right. Well, so, think, sorry, sorry. I We're not making really an right. assertion. Oh, hold on, Anthony, before we explain it to you, Wiggles. You're making an assertion using mathematics. We're not. Why should we have to educate you about your assertions? We're pointing out where they're wrong. Yeah? So if you want to sod off and sort out where it's wrong, i.e. it excludes perspective, then be free, feel free to do so. Don't ask us to do it. Shout out to my Mark. regards to Mark. So, Wiggles, we're addressing yes. the problems with your assertion and your calculations. They're not our assertions. We don't need to do a damn thing. You, on the other hand, are making fallacious claims because you exclude perspective in your ge geometric-only calculations. You only need, like, the, the geometry of the situation. You don't need to... No, you absolute idiot! We include perspective because every single picture ever taken ever includes perspective and relative sizes of things change with distance. So no, you don't just need geometry. Don't just assert your religious belief. Your geometry is hijacked reality. Reality includes perspective wiggles. Why aren't you getting this? I you are so indoctrinated with your religious belief that you expect me to accept only your model, only your religious faith, only your reification fallacy, and completely ignore perspective while you simultaneously ask me why. 
Well, you haven't explained why or how. Because we, to I have. For perspective listen, in the listen, listen. I have explained it because it's real. It's in every single picture ever taken. See this plant, right? It's not bigger than the things in the distance, you moron. That's why we include perspective. So that a six inch plant isn't classified as being absolutely minuscule when it potentially blocks everything in the distance that's bigger. It's not, it's not six inches high. It's still the same height that it is. It is six inches high. It's my plant. Oh, I thought you were talking... Wait, what are you talking about? A six-inch plant? You are a moron. This picture has a plant that's L tiny Nathan. with Nathan lots knows. of massive trees behind it. Well, the plant's not bigger than the trees, but in your mathematics, everything stays the same size regardless of its distance. It's geometry only, and you I'm keep sure asking me why it's like necessary to include perspective. Like a, and when like I explain more. it... You ignore it or talk over me like you're doing now. It's included because it's in every single photograph. So do you accept that perspective is included in every single photograph analysed by your geometry-only calculation? Or don't you get it still, having had it explained about half a dozen to a dozen times? I think he gets it, Nathan. I think he's deliberately obfuscating. I'm not sure what the point you're making is. I think he's pretty yeah. much lost the yeah, whatever. Track here. It's, I think he's playing playing dumb Nathan. Oh really? Oh, well let's have a little bit of fun with him. Let's just show my just show my pictures. I think it's very poignant. Hey. Rancy, did you grab those from Sky? Like flat Earthers talk about perspective. Uh, excuse me, Wiggles. No one was wait, talking Wiggles. to you. Shut up. Shut wait, up, Wiggles. You don't wait. get to assert anything here, you dick. After I've tried to get you to concede ten times that perspective is real while you obfuscate and tell the audience that they need to use your religious model only. How dare you think you can suddenly grab the mic? Shut the hell up. Okay, go to Shut the, up! Go to the, oh, sorry, that wasn't uh, Wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the uh, image that you can't really see very clearly, please, Ranty. Yeah, that one, okay? That is the top of the oil rig, okay? I'm at the same distance on the shoreline in all of these images, okay? So the oil rig is not going farther away from me, okay? This is early morning, like 6 o'clock in the morning, okay? Go to the next one. That, the, yeah, that one is an hour later at 6.55, you can even see the stilts that's on it, okay? I haven't changed my location. Now go to the other one. That's it. That's an hour later. Okay? It didn't move. But that first image, you can't see anything but the top of the rig. Okay? So right there, wiggles. The entire rig is still there. That's what we're saying. That's what um, we're telling what's you. What's hiding it, may I ask? The ocean is hiding it. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know How for can, certain. Okay, stop. Stop, Wiggles. How can the ocean be hiding it if I don't move my position and an hour later I can see the whole thing? Where did the ocean go, Wiggles? Well, I don't know for certain that you didn't move your position. Right. Well, he's telling yep. you this. Uh, but I don't have, I can't be sure of that. But it's his point that he's making. But who cares? What are you going to do if you do know? Apply a curve calculator and assert that your geometry-only calculations that exclude perspective suddenly match up to what we should or shouldn't see. Is that what you're going to do, Wiggles? No, I just thought I'd like to be certain that where the pictures were taken from. Why? Wiggles, I'm well, telling hold on. you. Why? I'm telling what you. What difference does it make? What do you need the data for? What is the purpose of knowing that? Just to be sure that he's not lying. About I'm what? not lying, Wiggles. And, uh, uh, what difference does it make? They look like different focal lengths to me. What difference does it make? Well, you could be taking one picture from really far back and one from like closer to it and at a higher elevation. Yeah, like that picture. Yeah, and, that looks lower elevation. So, and so what? What what difference? What are you going to do with the information was my question. Well, um... I'd use the curve calculator to see. Oh, if so you enough. will just assert your religious dogma about your curve calculator that doesn't account for perspective. Oh, right. We, we, we That's go. useful Retractual. if you're a dogmatist, if you've got a religious belief in things. That would be very handy to know that information. Me, I don't need to. I'd just say, look, there's an oil rig. Big problem yeah. if you're a globe head, though, isn't it? 
you have two fingers on it here essentially there's a finger there and a finger there and if you look back at this you've still got the same two fingers pointing up Dif different focal lengths different weather conditions it's it's the same. if it was gone if it was gone because of oh, no, 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 wait a minute. weather conditions i love it what do you mean weather conditions do you mean inferior mirage is happening here and the and the actual oil rig is behind that inferior mirage. Is that it's what you're trying to say? It's just refraction. Did did you just just say weather conditions? Yes. So, where does that where does this hide that? Where does where it, it here? Come on, you'll get it. You will get it. Just we've been doing conditions. this all year. We've and been getting all, to this point. And they're all taken at different zoom lengths. Where is it? Is What's that got to do with anything? Inferior else? mirage. Is it behind that inferior mirage that's there? It's, inf it's refraction. Is it behind it? It's refraction. <laughs> Sorry, is it behind it or not? Kick him out, Nathan. He's wasting our time. No, I'm not. I'm just. You going... are, Alan. You're a bigot. Get out. No, you be so wiggles. trigger happy, right? This is this is important. This is work that's been done all year long. Getting to yeah, this I culmination, agree. the culmination of finding out where the curve is, essentially behind the inferior mirage. This is where they've this is where they've co-opted it and been able to say, "Oh yeah, there's the curvature of the Earth." Well, it's not. It's behind the inferior mirage, and we've been working on this all damn year. I agree. To obfuscate this. They've got to obfuscate it, Ranty, to make it look like we're stupid in some way. No, if you can't accept it, get out because you're a denier. You're just no, literally I'm not a denier. To make it look stupid. I'm just suggesting it's uh, no, you no, you're just conditions. ignoring the, the effects of perspective because it's been so with your argument. Alan B. Alan B. I chuck if, if this was caused because of curvature, how would he be able to see it? It's not caused by curvature. You said not caused by you said refraction, Alan. Yes, so refraction. That implies. So, what is it refracting over? Under different weather conditions. What is it refracting over, Alan? You know what refraction is, Alan. Yep. Wait, 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 Alan. You guys say refraction over. when we can't, when we're not supposed to be able to see something. So you're saying we're not supposed to be able to see this. You're saying it's refracted, so we can't that? see it, right? So saying, how do we see it? Are you saying refraction doesn't change with? Um, Various times of the day, different conditions. Who cares? You, I'm you're saying, not I'm asking how it's hold working. On, hold on, hold on. If it's hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, refraction is real, yes. You don't apply that though. You apply something called terrestrial refraction, which is an arbitrary 76R, Alan. So, why are we talking about refraction? Because the pictures show it clearly. Yeah, re yeah we know that refraction is real. And I've just said, let's just say it again. You don't apply or deal with the real effects of refraction. You apply an arbitrary 7.6R. That would be called terrestrial refraction. That's something else, an arbitrary 7.6R. So I'm puzzled to why we're detailing the actual effects of refraction when that's not what you deal with in your globe world of 7.6R terrestrial refraction. Nothing to do with this at all. What I'm saying about with regards to the pictures that Travis has decided to show is that they clearly show different levels of refraction throughout the day. Okay, Alan, and, stop, Alan. And they also show pictures taken from different levels and different levels of zoom. Okay, Alan, listen. It is the same object at the same distance from me. I have not moved. Why, is, have why is the sea level higher? Tide. What do you, okay. <laughs> Listen, when when I was making these observations, I was just shooting to shoot. You know what I mean? I wasn't. I set my camera up. It's at the same height. I've zoomed in on some. I didn't have to zoom in on others. I'm just showing you. Okay, Alan, please listen to me. I am at the same location on the shoreline with my tripod. That is the same oil rig at three different hours in the morning. Six, seven, and eight o'clock. Are these pictures cropped by any chance? Uh, I just screenshot them and sent them to uh, Ranty. So you're saying... No, that... they're not cropped. You don't know that. Oh, he it's... just said so. Well, I, I, took the whole picture. I do have ears. Yeah. No need to be angry. No need to be angry. Well, then listen. Way. Stop. Off it's the brain bit that's the problem, though, Alan. It's not the ears bit. We know you can hear us. You can definitely see an inferior mirage, though, can't you? No. You can see that's... 
premium barrage down there and this barrage here and the line that runs through it. It's not a very good picture, is it, Ranty, to be honest? Ah, sorry, sorry. Let, Back to hold, smudges, hold are we? Sorry, now, yeah. now I'm confused again. <laughs> so, Alan, it's refraction, but we don't see mirage. That's what you're saying. It is refraction, but it isn't refraction. Well, which no, it is, is it? refraction and refraction changes So, we, so we do see mirage then, but why have you just said it's not mirage then? I don't get it. Which one is it's it? Refraction. Which, which, what kind of refraction? Is it terrestrial refraction? Well, you know, 7-6-R is just an average refraction, Nathan. No, no, it's an arbitrary figure applied based on a begging the question idea that we have a radius. It has sod all to do with the actual refractive effects. We went through this with Mick West. Maybe we need to replay the part where we ask him where in his references there is any any similarity to anything to do with actual refraction, which is what you're detailing, Globehead. Nothing to do with 7.6R. 7.6R is just 7.6R. 7.6 of the radius. Nothing to do with refraction. Nothing at all. Just a number you apply to bend it's things around a curved earth that you assume. Nathan, it's clearly looming. You're trolling here, Alan, aren't you? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Now. Let's get rid yeah. of Alan. And Hello, and Rumpus. How are you doing? How are you doing? Refractive, oh, conditions, refractive conditions change during the day, and he's observed this. The reason right. it moves it's up and down, distance, it's though. not it's moving, so therefore it has to be refraction because he's What's that got to do with 7 6 R? The C isn't moving. <laughs> what does that have to do with 7 6 R? A change in refraction. Sorry, this is not it? anything to do with 7 6 R. Terrestrial refraction. Yeah, and well, it varies. I mean, the refractive conditions are varying. So at one point it's seven. Yeah, you, you've ignored what I've said. Four. So here's the next chance you get before you get kicked out. What well, does this have to do go. with it's seven six R, the arbitrary value you globe head supply? I missed the start of that sentence because you over me. Well, listen up, Death. What does what you are detailing have to do with the arbitrary seven over six R you apply? The refractive, some most of the time in standard. Not refractive, right? You keep talking. You you're not I'm listening. Not I'm not talking about refraction. I am asking what you have already detailed about the very real ref effects of refraction have to do with the arbitrary seven over six R that you apply. Mm -hmm. The formula for refraction you can use as a multiplier on the radius. It's just a. Excuse me. The formula for a fraction does not include 7,6R. You're detailing things that have actual formulas applied. And when you go to Mick West's site, he goes and references them. But they absolutely unequivocally do not reference 7 over 6R. Nonetheless, the standard... What do you mean nonetheless? So what does this have to do with 7 over 6R? That's the standard refraction condition. No, it's what you tell us is standard refraction, but it has sod all to do with the thing you're detailing, which is actual refraction. Refraction effects in the atmosphere, not 7,6R. Not 7,6R. I'm asking you what the two have to do with each other, they're and you're saying, thing. well, nonetheless. They're the same things. No, they're not. 7 over 6R has absolutely nothing to do with real refraction. There's no reference to it whatsoever. No, no, it's a presuppositional graft, on, just thing. like the, the whole Cavendish gravity number. They are the same thing. No, no you're just... Frank he's just asserting it, right? So he's going to get one last chance. Am I going to ask again, what does actual refraction have to do with 7, 6R? Don't just assert that they're the same thing. Answer my question. Thing? Are they all the same thing? That's the so you're just going to assert they're the same thing. So it's time to kick out Rumpus because he doesn't want to give an explanation. He just wants the audience to know damn well that he's telling you they're the same thing. Even though I've asked him six times, what's the connection between real refraction and 7.6R? Well, I'll tell you the connection. They tell you it's the same. It's not. One is an arbitrary figure they will apply, 7 over 6R. One is actual effects that we see in reality. The two are not the same thing. One is called refraction. The other is called terrestrial refraction. An arbitrary 7 over 6R that has sod all to do with the real effects of refraction. Let's get that absolutely clear. Not the same because Rumpus said so. Can you? Uh, uh, but, but Rumpus said it was mathematically proven. Come on, Nathan. Can you share my screen, Nathan? Please. You're up. There's um. 
there's a point to all this um, talk about the Infirmirage and what we've just been showing about this um, platform that's in the distance. This is, um, again, looking at Barrow from um, the same location, off the railings, <clears throat> uh, each maybe about 20 foot apart on each time. However, this uh, post in the foreground is only about two miles away, this yellow post with a, with a black tip on. And if this was looming, if this, if this was being loomed now, then in relation to this post in the foreground, these buildings would look in a different position. Yeah. So this is with the inferior mirage. You can clearly see this massive inferior mirage going through the through the image. So we can't see those houses that I was evidencing today in today's video uh, because there's an inferior mirage happening. Now, in their argument, when they see this inferior mirage, they say that this is the curvature of the Earth and the rest of it's looming up if we see it. Right. So if it's being loomed up, when we look at the observation on a different day, uh, which is here, and we zoom in. Uh, again, the, the post is in the foreground. It's in exactly the same height. It's not being loomed up, and yet we're able to see right into the buildings of Barrow. Again, this is another video that I uploaded on my channel. And if we look at today's video that I took, which is here, again, the post in relation to the buildings, the buildings haven't gone up or gone down. So these buildings are not being moved by refraction. Terrestrial refraction is not moving them. This post in the foreground is a reference to that we can measure and see that these are not being loomed up. So when we saw that um, image with the massive inferior mirage, which was this one, um, and we couldn't see those buildings in the foreground, those houses, that are, those terrestrial house, whatever they're called, uh, residential houses in front of these buildings, we saw them today. Uh, this is the inferior mirage blocking it. It's all being blocked out and it's not being loomed up because this post is a good guide to, to reference with these uh, buildings in the, in the background. So the blockage is the inferior mirage. So when we looked at the platform today, Travis showed the platform. Uh, the bottom of the boat was at uh, the bottom of the platform was being hidden behind that inferior mirage, the same as this. Uh, when boats go off into the distance and you see the inferior mirage, the bottoms of the boats are being hidden by the inferior mirage. They're not, and they're not being loomed up. That's the most important thing, because the, if, the, if this building was being loomed up, it would be in a different position relative to this. That's genius. That's a really useful reference. And again, we've seen that on lots and lots of prior images. And again, the the reference is always exactly the same, right? Yeah, because it, like I say, if this is looming, right, then this post in the foreground, this building should be higher, it'll be higher up. And in, an, in any other image that I see on a clear day, um, like here, uh, on a clear day, old video, um, the post would be in a different position. This, these buildings would be lower down because the, in the other image, it's been loomed up, but it's not relative to each other they stay exactly the same and because i go to the same location off the same railings um i'm always at the same height um and lastly as i say this is today's as well this is the uh <clears throat> the terrestrial houses that we're seeing and we wouldn't have seen them terrestrial i keep saying that's residential houses um we wouldn't have seen them because of the inferior mirage in the other one there we go Destroying the looming nonsense. Absolutely awesome, Ranty. You well, said you're going to do a few more next, of these, right? Next month, I'm going for the full month. I'm going to go every single day. I'm going to be seen. I'm going to stand in exactly the same location and film in on this post here. And hopefully every day I'll get the buildings behind it. Um, upload the video and we will see if there's any change in the relative heights to the building behind. Um, I've never seen any change in the height in relation to the post in the foreground. So that destroys any argument for looming in my opinion. But let's do it for a month and uh, you know I'll, I'll upload the videos every single day. It might get a bit boring but the data will be there at least. And if after a month we've not seen these buildings raise or drop 
in any way, shape or form, then that kind of um, destroys their argument for looming. Very good stuff. I love it. Thank you also, Travis, for putting those pictures up, contentious though they were. Even if yeah. we can't, even if we do support looming, they've got to still show that it's cur it's curve it's it's looming over a curve. It's still subject to curvature. Right, still subject to them. I don't think that looming can even do that. I agree. That's why even if it, even if we can support looming in some way, then it still requires that curve to be shown. Try to show shadow. looming on a curved surface. You can artificially make that. So yeah, demonstrate that. I don't think it works. I think that looming basically really only works with horizons, with flat landscapes. That creates the condition, the limited view angle that allows these miraging and all that stuff to happen. And I, so I was going to demonstrate it Wiggles. on a curve. I was going to ask Wiggles a little bit earlier like the the pictures that Travis posted the uh that last picture on the bottom right all you saw was the pole right so if that's really gone because of curvature how is it possible that that pole is standing straight up 90 degrees how shouldn't that pole be tilted over and curving around the ball if oh no the really curvature is, yeah yeah um the pole wouldn't curve that much it would be pretty much facing at the same angle. But the great whole scale negator would be gone because of but the whole boat would be gone because of curvature, but the pole wouldn't curve that much. Right, you have to do you, take yeah, do you right. realize do you realize that that, that that doesn't make sense, right? Right, that, because no, what you're doing sense. no, what you're doing though Wiggles is that you have to imagine again, you can do this because you you believe in the model you do, so you can you have to imagine that the boat is on an angle away from you the entire boat okay the entire boat is angling away from you that's the reality <coughs> up you can't and over the curve of a ball yeah i mean so there's no way at, that pole could be 90 degrees up if you're gonna say the same thing that's causing that boat to disappear is the curvature you can't say that the pole is just not going to tilt over there's no way, man. Just common sense, man. Well, we can. I can work out the geometry of how much the pole would angle down. It would only change by a couple degrees. Yeah, but you have to give a value for the degrees, which is the same as working out the 8 inches per mile squared. The 8 inches per mile squared has to be figured into your one degree of curvature, which is 69 miles. Because if you have 69 miles of distance, that 69 miles is massive curvature so then you have to put the object on that curvature which is then not at 90 degrees from you anymore it's it's a but it's a it's all it's all smoke and mirrors it's all misdirection saying oh the the great scale of the earth uh completely undoes what you think should be a physical reality no listen just think about it logically put aside just think about it logically an object that is sloping away from you at that distance, at that degree, will not and should not appear to you at 90 degrees. Just just let that sink in. That's the reality of what we're talking about. I'm working out the angle right now. The angle would be, um, you can work out the angle by dividing 60 by the circumference of the Earth in miles. I got to look that up. It's 69 miles per degree, so you got to figure out what the degree is. The only problem is, is that I don't know the location of that oil rig. I cannot find it anywhere. Uh, called the Coast Guard off of California. I called scuba diving shops. They have no idea what the distance is from the shoreline. So we don't know the distance, but we don't have to know the distance. I'm telling you, you're looking at the same object, and you see it in three different scales because of the atmosphere. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go over a curve. It doesn't come back. Whoop, there it is. It came right back over the curve. That's why we can see the whole thing. Yeah, about one degree for 69 miles. Yeah, so it would only... Uh, yeah, the, the top of the boat would only angle away at a, about one degree. 
So yeah, okay. Listen to what I'm saying. That degree is meaningless. Okay. What is the curvature of 69 miles? That's the value of your degree. Because you're not only you have to figure in what the degree value is. Do the math for 69 miles real quick and tell us what the curvature is. No, if the boat sails 69 miles away, the boat is going to tilt by one degree. Please do the math for 69 miles and tell us what the curvature uh, amount is, please. I'm not sure what you're asking. Like, uh, I thought I eight answered Eight inches it per mile squared. 69 times 69 times 8 divided by 12. That, now you're talking about, like, how much would be obstructed. Will, will you just do it, please? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so... Observer height of zero feet, distance to object, 69 miles, amount of object hidden below horizon, 3,000 feet. That's the value of your degree. That's big, man. Think about it. 3,000 feet of curve. That's what the degree mm, value is. No. 3,000. Yeah. What do you mean by feet of curve? You can't like, just say it's only one degree. The, the, the degree has a value. You, you can't just say that it's 69 miles. I agree that I can look out 69 miles and see the object, okay? But you don't, you don't say that. There has to be 3,000 feet of curvature away from you at an angle. That's the value of a degree. The value of a degree isn't 69 miles. It's 3,000 feet of curve. So then you have to imagine, okay, put, uh, draw this picture on, on a piece of paper and put yourself on top of a ball and then arc yourself away at 3,000 feet. That's huge. That's like almost a mile. Well, it's what, two-thirds of a mile? No, we already said the distance away is 69 miles. <laughs> okay, you have to factor in the curvature as well, not just the straight distance. You have to arc the, the object away from you as well at 3,000 feet. Um, I don't think you understand this. Like, um... okay. Well, I, I'd be willing to be corrected by anyone else on the panel. Am I not making sense? Anyone else on the panel? No, I get it. You're saying that if you're curving away at a physical feet and inches distance, it just surprises me that suddenly the angle becomes critical and it's all about the limited angle when you're measuring things over a degree of the earth, cur to, uh, uh, the earth curve. Whereas when we say, well, the angle of view is limited, suddenly they all act like they don't know what's going on. Right. Wiggles, this is pretty common sense, man. I don't see how. I mean, I'm not a mathematician in any way, and I, I, I get it. Now, if a boat sails away, sails 69 miles across the ocean, then the angle that the boat changes is going to be one degree. What's the value of that? Now, what in does feet? that mean? What does that mean? What's the that value mean... of that in feet? Yeah, yeah. Do you know how many feet that is. You can't ask how many feet is a degree. That doesn't make sense. Of course it does, you moron. So, but well, you're using it as a distance. So how does it not make sense? You, you can't equate uh, two different how, dimensions, how? two different measures, two, two different like um, units. Well, you can't... Can't... Okay, but you're saying it'll tilt at one degree. What does that mean? To it you? means the boat will just like, just imagine if you took the boat no, and I rotated don't imagine. it. imagine. Right. What does that the answer mean? is 3,174 feet it'll drop. So you're saying one degree. I'm saying 3,174. 3,000. Oh, yeah, 3,000 is the amount of um, the length of the object that will be obstructed by the curvature of the Earth. No, 3,174 feet is the amount that in feet it will drop from your position if you were to be lay on the floor. It'll drop well, like 3,100 feet. So your one degree doesn't sound that okay. much, does it? But my 3,100 sounds an awful lot more. You yeah, it's all well, it, it drops without, um, without really tilting. Who cares? Forget about the tilt. Where's that 3,100 feet that, we're that, we're, that, we're, that you're talking about is just one degree? 
So I'll just think about it like as the boat sails away, it drops 3,000 feet and tilts by one degree. And it also starts getting smaller every time it moves. So every, every time it moves further away from you, by every foot, it's getting a little bit smaller. So how long will it be before it gets that small that it drops into the curve value that is, I don't know, 25, 30, 40 feet once it starts reducing its perceived size? It's not going to be very long, is it? Well, you can figure out, uh, you can just do arc tan of y over x to figure out the angular size of the boat. Right. And then once you've got the angular size and you make that down to a couple of pixels and then drop it behind the curve, that's not going to be that far away, is it? Because you only need one degree to get 3,174 feet, right? And the, the average boat's what? 30 foot? 40 foot? Yeah, you're going to notice 3,000 feet. Yeah. But we're still back to the same point. We're still back to the point that is things get smaller and then drop behind the curve with distance. And you guys don't account for it. And I'm wondering why that we're, we're, we haven't had closure on that point. Why has that been obfuscated accidentally or otherwise? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, oh, yeah, you've get... got a little chuckle in your voice again like you're a twat. Or who knows exactly what we're talking about. So that little laugh tells me, like Alan, that you know exactly what we're talking about and this is obfuscation time, right? Stuff gets smaller into the distance. Do you understand that? Oh, yeah, you can right. figure That's out Right, that's not in your calculator, yeah. Wiggles. Do you understand that? Sorry, I didn't It's not hear. in your calculator, Wiggles. Do you understand that? <laughs> Silence. Um, yeah, it do you understand need, that it's I not in your calculator, Wiggles? It, doesn't need to be in the Oh, market. so now it's it doesn't need to be. So you understand that things get smaller into the distance. Yes, we've got a big fat check mark next to that. But when it comes to you actually applying it, it's not necessary, right, Wiggles? Yes, it is necessary. That's our point. Do you understand now we've explained it? It's probably the seventh time we've explained it to you. It's just a situation of geometry. You just calculate It's not just geometry. Yeah, you only apply geometry, but perspective is also included in every single picture ever taken ever. It's not just geometry. That's the point. Like what? What I'm doing? What? What you do with the curve calculator is you just calculate the geometry of the situ situation. You calculate That's where right. the line. Yeah, That's not we, know. That yeah we, know. we know. Yeah, we know. We know. We know. It doesn't include perspective, though, does it? What What you're doing is you're cal. You're yeah. Don't tell us line. again. We know. <laughs> Listen, Nathan. No, it what? doesn't <laughs> include perspective. What what you're doing with the what curve what what? It doesn't include perspective. Wiggles. Repeat after me. My calculator does not include perspective. I'll try to explain this to you, Nathan. No, you don't so... need an explanation. I need you to repeat verbatim the fact of the matter. Your calculator does geometry only. Seize your presuppositional dispense of disbelief. Please suspense. So so what ha what, how the calculator works is you draw Don't a tell me how it works. I know how eyes. it works. It does geometry only. It does not include perspective. Nathan, allow me, sir. Would you fire up my screen? Wiggles, click on the thumbprint at the bottom of the screen so you can see my screen. Okay. Um, so this is an orthographic representation of what you guys need to do but do not do. When we have a mountain, the further away the mountain gets, the smaller it becomes because of perspective. It tilts away and it also drops into the curve. It drops behind that that curve that you tell us is there. So the question becomes, why don't you guys take into account the reduction of size over distance when you're okay. doing the geometric calculations only when you should be? You got to get straight that like the size of the mountain doesn't change the angular size of it does change we're confused. yes that's our point the size of the mountain the angular size the bit you ignore does change that's right wiggles that's our point thank you why don't you take, take why don't you take that into consideration in your maths wiggles because we're only concerned about the actual size in the cap oh right well we're concerned with what we take pictures of and they're relative sizes because that changes in a photograph wiggles so your calculator doesn't take into consideration reality then it's only concerned with the geometry of your religious belief can you see what it says on screen wiggles it says it's a double effect there's curvature drop and 
angular size reduction. So why is it you're only accounting for the curvature drop and you're obfuscating to death the angular size reduction? Because we all know why you can't address this. You have to obfuscate this point. You're like every ball or moron out there, you ignore it. Why? I could explain this if you would let me explain it. All yours. Okay. So I'll share my screen. Um, so, uh, no, wait, no. Uh, sorry, you got screen share is going. Okay. So what you do is at height X, you draw a line. So, so height X represents your eye. You draw a line I'm sorry, from your I'll eye. Sorry, I'll stop you straight away, Wiggles. There's a bit of an issue of here. Sorry, you've just said position X represents my eye, but that would mean yes. that I'm seeing the side of my own eyeball from this position, am I not? No, imagine, uh, imagine no, 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 an no. eyeball. You like, said position uh, X represents X. my eye. Did you not just say that? Position X represents my eye. This is where the magic trick yeah. comes. That's why I'm stopping you and interrupting you. You've just said position X represents my eye. That's not possible because I can't see the side of my own head. So this does not represent my eye. That is a lie. And the cheat that removes perspective wiggles. It doesn't represent my eye. So can you concede that straight away? That position X in no way represents my eye. Because Are it's an orthographic like representation. A on, uh, image, like, like right. a side view. It's a side a, view. An object. So it does not represent the eye correct you imagine that there's an eye sorry i'll x. say it again so you will concede you have just asserted incorrectly that position x represents my eye it does not imagine that there's an don't tell me what to imagine concede <laughs> that as you have just pointed out incorrectly position x does not represent my eye as you asserted you will concede this or I will carry on telling you that you're wrong because you are. You almost conceded. You said, well, it's a side profile. So it does not represent what I will see with my eye. No, it doesn't represent what you'll see with your eye. But Then I couldn't give a shit because you're going to be telling us what we see in a photograph. That is what I see with my eye. It's the same. It's a lens with an aperture that will let light through, like my eye. So when you compare this and tell the audience that position X represents the eye when it doesn't, that's the lie. That's no, where it does you represent cheat. The position of the eye. That's where you cheat. You have removed us from our eye whilst telling the audience that that is our eye, and it isn't. You're lying. It it's is not the eye. eye. It is your eye. Sorry. I mean, if you... You've just conceded that it does not represent the eye as you claimed it did when I stopped you. Now you're saying it does again. Im imagine a person standing Don't imagine. Right, like, I'm not right here, here to imagine that we're doing anything. You've said this represents the eye and it doesn't. And that's the trick. You've put us in a side elevation, told us that it represents the eye when actually we're from a third position looking at the side of our own head and the thing we're looking at simultaneously, something that is impossible in the real world. But you're telling us this represents the eye. It doesn't, Wiggles. That's the trick. It does. That's it does represent how the eye. you hijack perspective by telling the audience that this represents your eye. It doesn't, Wiggles. That's why I am keep going on about it. I, I'm just going to have to keep repeating that it does represent the position of the eye. Cause oh, sorry, the position of the eye. Well, we're not looking at the position of our eye. We're looking through the eye. Yeah, but can you imagine another person I don't want to imagine. Here? The camera doesn't require me to imagine anything. I can see the picture. I don't have to suddenly imagine anything. But you're demanding that we imagine that we are side on to our own head. That's how you remove perspective, Wiggles. That's our point. Are you capable of like having a, a, geom a like a geometry in your head, like imagining a like a, a landscape in your head? That's excuse me, Wiggles. It? Do I need to imagine that this is a lighthouse on screen right now? Click on my icon. Is this something that requires imagination, or can I just have a look at it? Well, 
Well, it's a picture of a lighthouse. Do I need to imagine anything when I just look at it? You can if you want, I guess. Uh, no, no. I'm really sure what Yeah, I can is. if I want, if I have a religious belief about the world I live in. That's you. So don't project what you do onto me and tell me what I could or couldn't do. I'll tell you what I do. I just look at it. Now, do I need to imagine anything when I just look at it? Because you're telling me that I need to imagine looking at the side of my own head. And I'm saying, no, Wiggles. That removes perspective because we're no longer looking through our own eyeballs anymore, are we? Removing perspective and looking at geometry only. That's our point, Wiggles. Or do you understand the concept of like drawing a model of a situation? Sorry, what do you mean? I've looked at the picture. I don't need to model anything. I just look at it. You're demanding that we model it. And when we do, we ignore perspective. Oh, wait, this is going nowhere. <laughs> no, no, it's your religion's going nowhere. Not me. I just look at this stuff and go, it's there. The Earth's obviously and observably flat. You tell me that a position, third-party position, to what we've actually seen in a photo is my eyeballs. Well, you're an idiot if you think I can see the side of my own head or that in any way represents a picture because that's taken from the view of the eyeballs, not 90 degrees adjacent to it, Wiggles. So this is going nowhere because we're pointing out where your religious belief hijacks perspective. And you're continually telling us that that's fine whilst telling the audience that position X represents your eyes. No, it doesn't. It represents a 90 degrees adjacent position that excludes perspective. Position X is where the eye is, right? Like at eye, the eye is at X meters above the surface of the earth there. Yeah, that's and where we're just are. drawing. So Wiggles, yeah, what are you going to do with your target? Are you going to reduce it as a function of distance? I'll ex I'll try to explain again what's going on with the calculator. Answer his question. <laughs> Answer his question. Here's why it's a target. Are you going to reduce the size of that target as a function of distance? Yes or no? Uh, no. See, that's where they lie to you. So you've removed us from the actual position that we observe. We are looking out across at this. We cannot see the side of our own head. And this will get smaller as a function of distance when viewed from this position. Wiggles will not reduce the size of the target, the angular size, which will reduce. In other words, he will ignore perspective and tell us that this is going nowhere, lads. You know, I'm not allowed to remove perspective from this and call it curved. Then, well, this is going nowhere. I mean, geez, guys, what do you want from me? What, to actually demonstrate curvature rather than just tell you mathematically when you are told that viewing the own side of your own head is reality? Is that what you think, Wiggles? Because it's not reality, my friend. You're a blithering buffoon that's been deluded into believing that you live on a sphere by removing all photography from the actual eye of the observer and putting it in this position, 90 degrees adjacent to your own head, and then telling us that that matches what's in the photograph whilst ignoring perspective. Okay, I think we're going to need to agree to disagree here. <laughs> yeah, let's agree to disagree. I'll disagree that the Earth's a sphere. You agree that the Earth's is flat, and then we'll all be happy. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, then smash the dislike button, but then smash it again. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. Also, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. They'll hopefully stick around and carry on for the after show, which will rebroadcast on my second channel, which is just called Nathan Oakley, at around 4 a.m. UK time. That's 0400 GMT. After this show finishes, there's also a repeat of the last debate together with the pre-show, which also broadcasts on Nathan Oakley channel. So I will stick a link in the chat box so you can go straight to that and tune in for the pre-show and debate should you have missed it when it broadcasts live. Once again, I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely you... day!
I don't understand why this is as simple as it is in my mind and Chocolate's mind and Tony's mind. I mean, we get it. We get this, okay? So I need you to trust me that I did not move my camera. I set it up. It's like four and a half feet above uh, the water, and I'm seeing the exact same object at three different times mm -hmm. in the morning over three hours, and I'm yeah. seeing it in three different ways. Oh, okay. So, okay. Well, I'll believe. I guess I'll believe that. I don't know. Like, um, I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> what? But why? Why don't you? Why can't you understand that I'm saying, I'm seeing this. This is a demonstration of what we were trying to explain to you that the the very early morning where I can only see the top of the rig. If I showed you that picture and I said, "What do you think of this?" You would say, "Wow, that's a lot of curvature." But it can't be curvature wiggle. It cannot be because three hours later, I didn't move, and the whole freaking thing is in front of me again. The whole thing. So then why it's is it obscured in the first place? Because of lack of air clarity. It eventually mists things up. This is actual local refraction from moist dissolved in the air. The diffusing sight. This is what happens at the end. This is what ultimately cuts off everything's view, no matter what it's going to be in the atmosphere. So it, it, it's the opposite of, a, of magnification. It, it compresses the image. That atmosphere in the early morning compressed the image, blocked it. Well, so it looks that, that way, image, yeah. Yeah, so that image is still there behind uh, the compression. The whole image is still there, physically. In a, in a direct line of sight. Wiggles, why don't you accept that you need to produce the, the size of summit with the care calculator? Well, because the, the size of an object doesn't change just because you're farther away from it. Yeah, it does. You add utter right. moron. The ang the angular there's size angular does size change. and actual size. The Come angular on. size does change, Wiggles, yes. Yeah. Angular yeah. size is what you get with sight. Actual size is what you use in design. It's not the viewing function. See? It's an assist. It's an oversight tool for design purposes and for quick overview or is whatever. It's a but you can't obfuscate. use it for viewing function because part of the viewing function is set. It's fixed. It's the side on view. So you can't use that for actual 3D viewing function, calculations, demonstration, whatever. It's, you can't use it. You understand that, Wiggles? Uh, I think we're going to have to give this a rest because it's going nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, no, going, we're not going to give it a rest. You get it or don't you? No, no, it is going somewhere, Wiggles. Your little chuckle and assertion that it's going nowhere, you mean you're too thick to get it through your thick head or you're just here to obfuscate and you won't allow it to go anywhere, but the reality is your calculator excludes perspective. We don't need to compare the world to a model. You've got a religious belief in a globe Earth and the Earth's obviously and observably flat. Now, you can say that it's going nowhere because you're not winning... But we're absolutely beating the living shit out of you with your stupid assertions about geometry-only calculations that remove you from the viewing position. And you can chuckle and go, I don't really get it. But that just makes you seem like a retard. Now, if you're happy to be here obfuscating and seeming like a retard, Wiggles, then good for you. But you do, in fact, seem like a retard. Okay? Uh, throwing insults is not going to work. No, American. you seem like a retard because we've explained that things do reduce in angular size about 12 times. And you just say, I don't get it, I don't really understand why. I don't see no, why that should be included. An analysis. But that's either because you are retarded or you're here to obfuscate. The chuckle in your voice tells me that you're here to obfuscate. I agree. What I'm doing is I'm trying to draw out the geometry of the situation. And yeah, we know. That. Yeah, but we what know. The problem is, yeah, is that it doesn't you're not include even perspective. To understand. We've said it. Not Every even... time he does it, he circle jerks us around because he's an asshole. You th do you think you're funny? Just keep asserting that you're doing the geometry. We know. Yeah, it doesn't include perspective. I just explained exactly why. He just why. completely ignored you because he's only here to continually assert 
that geometry only is acceptable without any acknowledgement whatsoever that the angular size relationship changes. He won't acknowledge that ever. He'll just say we're going nowhere when we say it 12 times. I, Bash I, him I over the head with it and beat the living shit out of him with it. it and he'll still obvious. say, I think we're going nowhere. Or I don't really understand why it should be applied. I have a good an another example. Just uh, let's say you have a checkerboard or some kind of surface and now use that surface you can draw in it whatever to basically calculate sight right just with the flat surface and yeah how do you do that it, you can't it's a flat surface it's actually a two-dimensional square it's missing a factor so it you can't use that in any way whatever you're going to draw in it to demonstrate actual viewing functions because it is 2d you can draw on it you can make some kind of illusion that makes gives us the impression it's very much like the 3d world but it's not because it is in actuality a two-dimensional surface well, so you, can. you can't use it to directly prove calculate or literally display as it is a 3d reality view it can't work there's a geometrical link missing well, it's you 2d you, you i think you can take a two-dimensional slice of a three-dimensional space that's no problem yeah but that's not what this is that's exactly what i'm doing no, that's not a two dimensional what slice no, that's what this is based space. on the presupposition you're on a globe Wiggles, you do realize. And it ignores that. diffraction, real life three dimensional yeah. optical effects that we can prove and demonstrate to ourselves very easily, even on the small scale. It's there. This is an actual optical effect of the reality of 3D vision. And you can't demonstrate these effects with a two dimensional surface representation. It's physically impossible. You could describe how it should work but you can actually literally display how that effect works on a two-dimensional surface because the three-dimensional element is missing to be able to achieve that because it's yeah. purely a 3d effect I, like i said i think it's just good to just agree to disagree you guys can think the world is no, fine no that's not good enough think it's that's not good enough what a total what? asshole it's good Why enough do you think for that's me what do you mean? we don't we don't think the earth is flat when we see these observation wiggles we just look at them and say this stuff is there right you look at it and tell us that we need to remove ourselves from the observation exclude all perspective take into account only the full size of the objects none of the angular relationships between them given their distances and then assert that when we see things getting smaller into the distance, that's actually it dropping into Earth curve. So this is nonsense. It's not agree to disagree. You're wrong. We are right. Your model is meaningless and a reification fallacy to assert that that's what Earth should or shouldn't do. And it's also wrong because it excludes perspective. So it's not agree to disagree. You're just a zealot, a bigot, and you will not concede any point here. And I think you're doing it intentionally. But I well, Wiggles tried to respond before to what I said. He said, but you can take out a slice. But yeah, there you go. It's another representation of things present, supposedly, in some 3D area. But sight is not just a representation of what is physically present. It's actually a viewing function. It's unique to the 3D reality. So no matter where you're going to take this slice, you can never use that slice to demonstrate this viewing function. Precisely. Because it is 2D and it can't include viewing function because that's exclusively 3D and upper. Right. <laughs> Our eyes and cameras perform viewing functionality. Your geometry does not. Like I said, I'm, I'm happy to just agree to disagree. No, we're not we can give a crap what you're happy, happy with. Yeah, well, that's because you're a zealot. Your happiness. Why that's because you're just a zealot. freaking listen to what we have to say? Yeah, we've told him 12 times. He's only happy to agree to disagree because at this position, having been battered, his only yeah. position is to say, well, I simply don't agree because it's not like you've made any sense here. Therefore, I can't possibly concede that any of what you say makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's not acceptable that we agree to disagree. You're wrong. And you're just you wrong. You're just a smaller. sore loser. That's all it is. 
or completely stupid and can't recognise your own stupidity. It's a bit of Dunning-Kruger, I think, we've got going on here, Wiggles. It's not agree to disagree. It's your thick. No, I'm going to agree to disagree. and I think Oh, well, that's because you're a retard. That's because you're stupid. That's because okay. you, that you don't know when you're beaten. That's because you don't know when you're beaten. Yeah. You don't realise that you've had your ass kicked. Yeah, you don't realise that you've been beaten. Again, a demonstration of your stupidity. Not an insult, a demonstration by you. And We've pointed it out on multiple good. occasions, but you haven't conceded a single point, and now you're saying we'll agree to disagree. No, we won't. We know we've handed you your own ass. We know you've lost. We know you haven't got a single winning argument here. So no, we're not agreeing to disagree. You lost. We won. You are either stupid or a zealot. You can think what you want. I'm not going to tell you it's what It's not to thinking. Yeah, we can, it's and been we demonstrated. And this is what we think Great. you are. And you are. No, not think. Demonstrated by you. You haven't got any comeback when we assert that you're excluding perspective from a geometry only calculation you've got no response to that what's your response to that that i'm drawing the geometry of the situation yeah that's what i've just said so your response is to repeat back to me the problem rather than address it let's try a different tact wiggles what what, what part of the world are you are you in australia uh canada canada right so you're a bloke of what 39 40 uh mid 20s Mid twenties. So if I was to put my camera on now and show you the whites of my eyes and tell you that you're being dishonest, would you put your camera on and show tell me that you're not being dishonest? Um sure. Let's do that. I'll put my camera on, you put your camera on. Okay. Put your camera on, Wiggles. Ooh. Ooh. A bit dark, but Right, let, let, let's let's try it again. Here we go. Do, do you agree that objects get smaller the further away they get from you? Uh, the size of the object doesn't change. From the viewing angle of the, of the observer. Sorry, yes, smaller. the size does change. It's called the angular size. Yeah, the angular size changes. Yeah, so the, the size, size does change. Sorry, Wiggles. So you're smirking at me. So the size does change, Wiggles. And then if it is going over the curve... Hold on, Anthony. With... Respond to me. The size does change. The Come angle. On camera, that, yes. Come on Don't camera. repeat it back to me. Acknowledge that the size does change, Wiggles. Yes, Nathan. The size does change. The angular size changes. Yes. yes I'm looking for... Changes, yes. Right. So you do not account for that in the calculation, Wiggles. That's right. Um, I don't think I need to. It's calculated Sorry, in so literal size. You're smirking at me. Admitted. Look at you, you little arrogant fuck. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. Let's no, not... hold on. He's you want to smirk at me, Wiggles? Wiggles? Do you think you're funny? Yeah. Do you think you're funny with your little smirk? That smirk tells me you know you've had your ass handed to you. Okay. Yeah, so the angular size does change. Now you're going to say that you don't think it's necessary to account for that very real fact of reality. It's Duper's Delight. Yeah. Duper's Delight. Actually, Correct. Yeah. He's actually dumb. I thought you wouldn't put your camera on because I thought that you were going to be dishonest and be a faceless warrior. But you've actually put your camera on. Credit, right? However, to actually believe that these things don't need to be accounted for mathematically as a function of distance, that they get smaller... That makes you actually stupid. Now, I, I don't mind that you're not, you know, you, you see it as being honest. But the fact remains that when we look over the horizon or at the horizon at a boat, and it's a little tiny couple of pixels, and you're putting the curvature relative to the actual size of it, when it's a little tiny pixel on the horizon, that pixel drops behind the curve way before what you think it does. And that's the, that's the deception. Now, I don't, I don't actually think you're being dishonest. I think that you are actually just retarded in the fact nah. that you ignore it. Because you wouldn't have put your camera on if you weren't. So credit for putting your camera on. But Wiggles, it's not acceptable to ignore the fact that things get smaller. And then when you put the hidden value against the thing that you're looking at, if you don't reduce the height of that, mount, that thing, that mountain that you're looking at, then put your hidden against it, then you are the spawn of the enemy. <sighs> enemy, God. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm I, happy I think... in my religious belief. I'm happy in that. 
That's no, fine. That's fine. That's so fine. you accept? No, with I'm maths. cool with that. So you accept that it's a religious belief? Fair enough. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Okay. You have to, you have to accept that your maths is wrong for your religious belief to work. Uh, mostly, you need to understand why, and that's what we've been explaining. And it's really frustrating when you every time give what's almost in disingenuous signals that you didn't get it. Well, we explain it really well and detail and over and from more angles. Any person would get this if they were open minded. So I get the feeling you have some serious indoctrination mental blockages there that make you not listen. Is this the case you think? Do you tune out when we explain things? Do you feel that happening? Well, I find I know, I, I, your explanations, just to be honest, they just don't, they're not making sense to me. <laughs> oh, that's another, Why? That's another can smirk. you focus? Yeah, I can Why, hear the smirking, get, Darwin. You he's smirking while he's saying it. So he does no, hear the problems. No, I don't problems. think so. I think he's embarrassed. Yeah, I think he he's doesn't get no, he's not, he's why not, he doesn't smirking. understand it. Really. Wait, I can hear it in his voice. He's laughing while he basically says, I don't see that there's a problem here. He does see there's a problem. That's why he's laughing. It's his tell. Oh, he's catching on now. I think he's just laughing mostly because he's embarrassed. He doesn't really know what to do about the situation. But he doesn't want to lose face because that's so important with the ballers. See? But I think he genuinely just... It, it won't catch. He just can't fit it. Well, I, I don't necessarily I, think you're really stupid because you are not, uh, you're still too well spoken to be truly stupid. But I do think you have some serious mental blockaging well, happening. No, let me ask, let me ask Wiggles. Wiggles, you're, you, obviously, you don't believe the earth is flat, right? So, what is your point of coming on to this show? Is it to show us where we're wrong in thinking that the earth is flat? Is that what it is? That yeah, I'm trying angle. to see if I can convince you guys that it's round. But when we get to the point that we point out that you're you have to round get maths, your own knowledge first. But when we get to that point that we point out where that's wrong, where your assertion fails, you snigger. Yeah, because I don't think you've brought up a valid point. So you think it's okay to ignore perspective? I don't think it needs to be accounted for. Like, so, so you, know, you do you just so, draw like a. So that's a yes. You, you just broke so your own yes. intellectual neck. Hold on, Alan. So that's a yes. You think it's okay to ignore perspective? Yeah, I'm, I'm just drawing like a small model of the situation, right? Like, you know, if you had like a model city of an actual city, it's to scale. So I'm just drawing a two scale model of a 2D slice of the earth. Yeah, and then you're looking at it side on. Yes. Yeah, that excludes perspective. And every single photograph ever taken ever will never get that view. So when you compare that, to a photograph, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand the side-on thing, Wiggles. When we don't look at things side-on, I, I explained it. It's you if, can't if we're emulate picture, viewing with a two D surface representation. I, I, I would like him to explain it to me, like I'm just you know a complete idiot, you know. Please, because you probably think I am already, because I'm a flat earther. So that's okay. I want you to use that and explain to me why you would look at, take a picture that's looking at something and then draw a diagram to explain that picture from a different angle that I'm not viewing that picture from. Please explain that to me. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just like um, you're creating a, a small 2D slice, a small 2D model of the large 3D, well, the large 3D Earth. Like you put your, you imagine that the person here is at point X, they have their eye here. And then you draw a line tangent to the circle. And then Wait. from all this information, you can calculate why. That's, I think, like, yeah. I but so that. for that, I have to imagine that I'm on a ball and that I'm looking at my the side of my head. Yes, that's what uh, I'm drawing, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not what we see, though. Right. We, there's no picture that I've ever taken. See this car in your simultaneously, view. Simultaneously, I can this, see the side of my head while I take that very picture. And, the, and see these see cars that going a, by at the I'm moment, right? If I draw these cars in side profile wiggles, they always remain the si same size, regardless of how far I push the car away.
See those little dots of lights in the distance? In reality, they get bigger the closer they are to you. But on your side elevation, the car would remain the same exact size regardless of if it was on the left-hand side of the page or the right-hand side of the page. But that's not reality. That's not how the world really works when you look at it. That's why it's wrong. In other words, Squiggles, we do have perspective, but you exclude it. It's the same point we've been making the entire show. Yeah, I know you're probably not going to like that I'm going to say it, but I'm happy to agree to disagree at this point. Well, yeah, disagree no, with what? That. So which bit are you disagreeing with? Are you saying that, that I'm wrong in my just assertion I've just made? So on the left-hand side of the page, if you were to represent this, what's on screen now, in your modelling methodology, you would end up with these cars staying the same size on the left-hand side of the page and the right-hand side of the page because we can see the side of our own head and the targets moving from left to right on your 2D representation. But they always remain the same exact size regardless if they're on the left or on the right, even though this car now is getting bigger. That car that's just passed took up a third of the frame when it passed us. Now it's getting ever smaller. But on your representation, it would always be exactly the same size, and that's not the world we view. So do you disagree with that? Because I'm not agreeing to disagree. Your world doesn't include perspective, and that's wrong. Well, what it is when you draw a model, you're drawing everything as if it were actually, like, you're drawing it as if it were to scale. Like, you're, you're just drawing the situation as if it were a real model. Like, that's the best I can explain this. Yeah, and when you do so, the size of the car on the left does not change when it goes to the right. Yeah, because that's what happens in reality. The no, this is re no, no, no. You see, that's your problem, Wiggles. That's a reification fallacy. That's not reality. That's a model, right? In reality, the car that's just passed us has taken up a quarter of the frame when it was near us and is now taking ever less amounts of the frame as it gets further away. That's reality. That very specific thing I'm detailing now is ignored inside view. Now, I keep explaining it to you, but it's like I'm banging my head against a wall. You're saying you don't see a problem with that. This on screen is reality. Your model is not reality. No matter how close it might get, it's never going to be reality. That's called the reification fallacy. It's like, are you familiar with like engineering schematics? Sorry, we're not building something. We're studying photographs when we compare them to your model, which puts it inside view. We're not building anything. I'm looking at cars traveling past us, Wiggles. Can you see what's on screen? See this car coming yeah. closer to us? It's getting bigger. Yeah, I see the cars. It's yeah, filling they, more they, of the frame. Yeah? Filling more yeah. of the frame. Yeah? Exactly, yes. Right. Well, the Isle of Man, when it's further away, fills less of the frame. But in your representation, it wouldn't make any difference if it was on the left-hand side of the page, right in front of your observer at point X, or on the right-hand side of the page. It's the same size in your representation. But in reality, it gets smaller with distance. That's reality. What actually happens, and that very detail is ignored in your model i've said it it's got to be 15 times i've said it to you wiggles are you still going to tell me that you don't get it or that we should agree to disagree on this very hijacking of perspective yeah i'm going to say we're going to have to agree to disagree <laughs> well that's because you don't realize that little laugh tells me that you do know you've had your ass handed to you and that you do understand that your model excludes reality. Reality being that things close to you are big and when they're far away, they're small. That doesn't happen when you represent the world and tell us that that is the world. A reification fallacy. Fallacious reasoning. So if you don't get that, then again, you are just stupid. I can't help that if you don't realise that you've had your ass handed to you. If it's still not sinking in, then you've got cognitive dissonance. That's not my problem either. I agree, Wiggles. What he's saying is right. You, you, you are literally ignoring the mathematical essential nature of the thing reducing in size. And you're, you're asking us to agree to disagree. No. 
things do remove the size as a function of distance. That needs to be addressed when you come to apply your hidden. The fact that you ignore that or want to agree to disagree, you are stupid, man. Come on. Well, that geome the geometric curve is always a constant, right? And it's always there. But you apply it against the reduced height of the thing that you're looking at, not the absolute height. I don't know what to say other than objects don't change. Like the physical art size of an object doesn't change. Yeah, but that's not how you see Sorry, things. Sorry, it's just circle jerking us again. Angular size. Sorry, that's let's do it again. Point. Let's do it again. So the angular size doesn't change. No, the angular size does change. You've just said the size doesn't change. Yeah, the physical size doesn't change. But Sorry, the angular. yeah, but when we deal with pictures... We're dealing with relative sizes. Do you think that when we take a photo of something, we're taking actual sizes or relative sizes of things in the picture? Which do you think occurs? When you take a picture, you're taking a projection of a 3D space onto a 2D plane. So do we account for the relative sizes of things when we open the shutter? Or does it suddenly put the view of the world like we've got on screen now? See, the problem is, Wiggles... That the view of the world that's on screen now, can you see what's on screen now? Yeah, I think there's like a bunch of like yeah. cones. Yeah, on it. let's pretend yeah. for a second that these are mountains. This mountain here on the left is exactly the same size as this mountain here on the right. Would you agree? Uh, sure, yeah. Right, but the angular size of this mountain were we to be viewing it from this actual position rather than this removal of the position would give us that this mountain was appearing that would be apparent size much smaller so when we're in this view everything stays the same size this mountain you can say is a certain number of feet and inches and that's accurate and so is this one and it's still accurate the problem being that when we look at it through the lens of the camera, the one on the right is much, much smaller than the one on the left. So when you say the sizes don't change, you're wrong. Because when we look through a camera, their sizes do change. The angular size changes. Do you understand now? Okay, yes, I'm wrong. Right. But the problem that now you've got is if you can accept genuinely and sincerely that you're wrong with regards to the mathematics, if you then correct the mathematics and then you apply the hidden against the things that are reduced, then you've got a whole shitload of problems because then there's no wiggle room anymore, wiggles. <laughs> the, the world then doesn't match the calculator at all. And the earth can only be the alternative the discrepancy is vast. It's not a little bit. Well, I can say that the calculator matches what I see in reality. Like, I've done the no, viewing. No, you've just, done it again. You just... you've just flipped back again. The calculator only represents what your reality is if you apply the hidden against the absolute size. Try doing it with the reduced size as a function of distance, and then let me know how, how it affects your uh, perception then, because you should be on our side at this point. You should realize that, the, oh, shit, the curve calculator isn't reflecting the world that I see at all, at all. Because when you reduce the height of the something that you're looking at and then drop it behind the curve, then it's going to obscure it after about 20, 30 miles. And then it's not going to match at all, Wiggles. It's, it's so, more so simplistic. If you an autographic <laughs> view it's, representation that excludes perspective. Exactly. So, it's, it so doesn't represent what you see. Because that's what you're see. looking at. Exactly. It doesn't represent what you see because it doesn't represent what you see. That was the very first point I made when Wiggles brought up his calculator. Your eye is at position X. Well, it isn't. So in the most literal sense, it does not represent what you see. Literally. Did they see the car when you pulled up? Mm -hmm. Wiggles, you just you just admitted that you were wrong, right? So does that mean you understand? Well, I think I'm going to round out while Wiggles undoubtedly circle jerks us all back to his original position. 
So with that, I'll say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the Second Channel audience, the Nathan Oakley audience, for tuning in and hopefully sharing this after show. And also a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this after show possible. If you hated this show, then be sure to smash the dislike button twice. But if you liked it, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Be sure to tune in to the after show on tomorrow's broadcast. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!